Welcome to Unmasking Humanity, 21 Questions with Joshua T. Berglund. I'm your host, Joshua, and today we have a musical genius, someone with the voice of an angel, Alna, from London, England. And I don't know if she's actually from London, but that's where she lives now, and she's an absolutely brilliant, brilliant musician. We just met yesterday, got to talk on the phone. I was introduced to a mutual friend. We immediately hit it off, have a similar soul mission. And so then I took a deep dive into her music because I wanted to hear, you know, what this person was all about. And it's amazing. Uh, one thing that you're going to be able to see in the blog section uh, during this broadcast of Joshua T. Berglin, I'm going to have all of her music built into the blog. You'll be able to see it and explore for yourself. And it's just, I actually, I actually got to hear some unreleased music yesterday. And I think the unrele unreleased music is heavenly. And uh, I hope she releases it soon because it's absolutely fantastic. Got to hear three unreleased tracks. So I felt very privileged by that. And I and I listen, I, it's an honor for me to get to meet anyone that's talented and anyone who's pursuing their dreams. One thing I also learned, and I don't know if I'm supposed to say this, but um, I didn't get an official bio, but Alma is a mother also, a very proud mom of her two kids that um, when she was sharing with me about her children, I mean, I, I got chills because there was just so much love for them and she's so proud of her kids. So I don't know if I'm supposed to mention that or not, but I, I am and forgive me if not, but uh, to her children, your mama loves you a lot. She's very proud of you. And um, I'm honestly honored to be able to introduce to you all, Alma, um, again, who is one of the most talented people I've been able to meet. And I wanna encourage all of you as soon as this interview is over, go check out her YouTube page and listen to her music because whatever mood you're in, there's something for you and it's truly special. So today's 21 questions is going to be super fun. It's going to be interested, should be lighthearted, but I think we're going to be able to really find out what Alma is all about and get into her heart and just learn more about her process and what she's up to in the world. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, please welcome my new friend, Alna to Unmasking Humanity, 21 Questions with Joshua T. Berglund. Alna, everybody. Welcome back to Unmasking Humanity, 21 Questions with Joshua T. Berglund. It is an absolute honor to introduce my new friend, the uber-talented and soulful angelic singer, Alna. Alna, welcome. How are you? Hey, thank you. I am very good. It's good to have you here. Before we get into 21 questions, I would love to know, what are you grateful for today and why? Um, I'm very grateful to be here. I'm grateful for this moment, for this space and time where we are meeting and aspiring a change, hoping to involve a lot of beautiful people to feel the the big power that is with us you know the good deeds and the good energy and the love and we're supposed to come and unite and i'm so blessed to be part of this journey inspiring people to to, to unite and feel the love and feel the connection beautiful and you're absolutely doing that through your music and we're going to get into that right now are you ready for your 21 questions i was born ready go for it <laughs> all right let's go alna question one can you describe the moment you realized your music had the power to unite people across cultures? I can remember that since very young age, I felt like I have a very big mission and I felt that it was connected with my voice, but I felt not encouraged, I guess, enough from my environment because all of my family are artists, and uh, but they're artists in a different way, not in a singing mus musical way. So they were not able fully to support me and guide me. So I felt a bit lost and I was I didn't know where to start. But when I truly felt that my voice has a power and massive impact on, I think, heart level, I think my biggest uh, gift is to touch hearts. And through feeling, we can aspire healing. And I felt that for the first time once I met my teachers and two years ago, uh, Northern Shamans. And they reminded me of my mission. They made me feel the love and they made me feel the separation that every person feels, and they made me realize how important the gift 
the voice that I have and they kept asking me to write more music that can unite people and then I realized wow people are listening and really feeling it and feeling the high emotions and feeling unity and since then I started to be more focused on being very conscious about my lyrics and about my melodies because they can take one or another way if you know mm. I announced in my opening that I got to hear some unreleased music from you and uh, two of the three songs had me in tears. I won't say what they are because I don't want to release it, but hearing your voice, oh, it was it, it was it was special. I, my parents even listened a little bit. So it was like, we were all listening and I've already, I told my friend, I think I told you about Robert. Like, I mean, we've all been listening to your music going, oh my gosh, like, this is unbelievable. I cannot believe I just met you yesterday. So anyway, that was a beautiful answer. And yeah, your music is truly special. All right, number two, how does your unique musical style create a bridge between diverse listeners and foster a sense of shared humanity? Okay, so I think that uh, part of my question number one, uh, maybe kind of touched the answer of number two is, I feel that my calling is to touch hearts and through touched hearts uh, awaken parts of the soul of a person that maybe in past lives or maybe in this life experienced something and can relate to the feeling that now he feels through his heart because in our heart really truly we feel so many things we feel sadness we feel we feel love we feel these high emotions that can you know take us to a very low place or can take us very high high place but either way i believe strongly believe that feeling is really a lot to do with healing of the soul mm -hmm. so once we can touch those hearts and you know maybe encourage these people to to really just succumb to that music and feel and and maybe come back to those moments where they felt vulnerable or so happy and remember those feelings and then Truly, the idea is to remind people that we can be in control of our thoughts and emotions. And through some amazing practices that I am practicing myself, we can change the state of our being just with the decision, I'm going to do a practice rather than being moody, unhappy, and negative in this moment in space. And I, I believe 99% of humanity don't know those practices. So it's a very big mission of ours to introduce them. You understand? <laughs> That's so good. That is so good. Number three, what inspired you to explore the healing potential of music and how has this journey transformed your art your artistic vision? Okay, so now uh, we're coming to, I think, very deep topic. Uh, uh, music uh, and instruments in ancient religions and ancient traditions, I would say rather, ancient cultures were created instruments such as drums and guitars and some flutes, they were created to touch hearts. So naturally they were created to, to, to create feelings and healing, right? Harmonize our DNA. And um, interestingly enough, we have few families in control of uh, whatever is happening at the moment in the world. And one of the families have, uh, very much so um, funded the change of the instruments. So the instruments that we are able to buy these days, guitars and pianos are all tuned to a little bit different frequency. Instead of 432, they are tuned to 440, which is less than half a tone higher, but it has completely different effect on our DNA and on our feelings. We just don't feel and connect the same way in music anymore, unless that music was consciously created in 432, which I have, discovered uh, really i feel a lot of times i've heard about it but never did i take action to understand the importance of it so a couple of months ago i tuned my guitar to 432 and then i just played a few chords and i was like oh my god i just <laughs> wanna i don't want to stop playing it just feels so good so since then i made a decision to re-record uh, all of my songs um from 440, which is natural, uh, you know, somebody sends you a track and then you kind of record your voice. It can be very healing, very soothing, very, but the true core of it still should come, I think, from conscious decision. I am gonna do this in 442 because that's the right way to provide healing for music. So since then I've re-recorded some of my tracks and I already have some producers who are very happy to work with 432, which uh, again, uh, provides a little bit more complication for them 
but it opens mm -hmm. completely different area of uh, of work and and direction for their work i think which is you know really empowering and i feel stronger than ever before knowing what uh, that this is my mission is for free too and spread the word spread the love and you know be there for everyone who who's seeking it is that what i was listening to yesterday yes. was it in fourth oh there is a difference i mean i'm telling you i was crying like wow uh, tears but inspired tears like mm. you you have one of those voices it just moves me anyway number four could you walk us through your creative process from the initial spark of inspiration to a finished composition that awakens the soul? Okay. So uh, there are a few ways to write a song and there are a few starting points, I guess. Uh, sometimes it happens that you just wake up or you just have this moment of inspiration when you hear a melody mm -hmm. and you kind of want to add some powerful lyrics to it because these days I don't just say things that doesn't have a deeper meaning. You understand that con consciously words have such a strong meaning, but we may not necessarily are able to understand it and apply it directly for the moment and time we're using those words. So this is one way you hear a melody and then you kind of come up with some lyrics. So you come up with the chorus and then you build a story around it from, from my own experience, or maybe if I'm writing from perspective of my sister, who's maybe suffering a bit more, or from my from the perspective of my brother who's maybe not able to see as much uh, as i do at the moment um so this is one way another way would be uh, i would just decide to sit down and write a song about this particular theme uh, for example it could be anything it could be you know sisters feeling sisters or brothers stopping the war because we should you know support each other rather than just listen to what other above people above us tell us without really any reasoning of our own and any any guidance of our own because truly if we were guided by our higher self we would never choose to hurt anyone it's true so um yeah uh, i mean there is also another third way where somebody says okay and i have amazing beat for you a house beat or uh, i don't know electronic music beat uh try to write something i'm like yes yeah, send it over so i just put it on i listen to it i feel it uh, i ask uh, higher higher spirits to guide me to leave the most impact and create something really meaningful that can later serve for the for, for my purpose and for the purpose of humanity of uniting and um and then i just i just jam i i hear i record a bit then this becomes a bit of a chorus a bit of a hook and then i type it out and uh, slowly i cut and then move things and then it becomes a song and then producer is very happy to maybe move and create a bit more interpretation before and after just to kind of finalize the actual song and then we would release it or we would maybe just decide to make a playlist out of it so people who are listening to my music on youtube they have access to much more music than people who listen to me on spotify because we all understand that uh, you know all these platforms are really uh, uh, not designed to serve artists or creator um but i think that it's important to showcase what it is that we do and uh, i chose youtube to be one of those platforms that shows uh, a wider uh, catalog I, I guess so and uh, yeah i'm very looking forward to start uh, creating and integrating my own uh, songs into my website where people are able to regardless if it's released or released they're able to say okay i want to i want to have the song you know and they can just pay 90 pence for it and just have it directly to their phones or their computers to serve that, their purpose um yeah so i'm looking forward to working and making you know this world much 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 better place i love that i really love how the one thing that's been different about this 21 questions and the others and i don't want to compare them because i love them all i mean they've all been special to me but you really are diving deep inside your mind and walking people through the creative process and and how you think like the, it's getting to see the mind behind the artist that is you know helping cr the creative process i guess is the way to say it but I really love how deep you are going with these answers. I appreciate that very much from you. Because I mean, here's the thing, I'm learning a lot from it, but I know the audience will too, because it's it's so interesting, especially with somebody as talented as you are. It's neat. Number five, ah, how do you blend ancient wisdom with modern musical techniques to create your distinctive sound? 
interesting. I think very beautiful question. Um, uh, I have been a bit uh, locked down in my own box, I would say, past year, because I, my teachers said to me, you have to write, write, like highest emotions, you know, record, record, we need it, the whole world needs it. And what I saw, they were doing it sometimes. They would take a song that is already, they already crafted the song and they would rewrite the lyrics. And with the highest emotions, they would record the song and song would, would, would have so much more meaning and power behind it. But also people who related the song can also feel like, hmm, I know the song, but it sounds like I, I hear the message is also so important. So I, I kind of felt like I never wanted to do covers in my life because I felt like, I mean, it's so easy to write a song. Maybe it's one of my super skills to write a song that can touch, you know, touch, mm -hmm. touch hearts. Um, so I kind of didn't do it. I was like, I just need to have producers to produce for me. And then I'm just going to write something that makes sense that humanity needs to hear. And then we're going to see if something works out and we can release, or if we can't, I can just maybe put it in one of my playlists on YouTube. Uh, but this year, I realized that it doesn't really matter where the music comes from. If the music comes with the intention to provide a feeling of unity and 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 high emotions of you know joy, of happiness, of of, of surrendering for for whatever is waiting for us, because we know it's good things coming. Uh, I think that uh, is the lyrics and the emotions for the voice that is gonna really touch people. It's it's not necessarily just the music. I think it's very important to have conscious message and with the high emotions, people will feel it. I definitely agree. People feel your music. Um, yeah, this is neat. Number six, if you could choose one of your songs that best represents your personal transformation, which would it be and why? I think it would be Destiny. Uh, yeah. you, you did, you did mention the song that made me that. cry. That was the one that made me cry. <laughs> <laughs> I think destiny, because, uh, first of all, it has a very powerful lyrics that came from my teachers and it's about surrendering, uh, for, you know, for, for this beautiful experience of life in here, knowing that everything is going to turn out the best way for us. And, and then, you know, what, what kind of stays behind is we don't need to stress, we don't need to worry, we don't need to run too fast, we don't need to make it uncomfortable for ourselves trying to achieve our mission faster than we were supposed to. I think we need to learn to just take it easy and enjoy the journey as much as um, having a bit of discipline to support, you know, and have a balance of both to complete, uh, have goals and complete those goals, you know. And uh, yeah, I think destiny talks uh, from the heart to the soul and that's the biggest mission, yeah. That uh, that's really interesting that you said that. I did a video today about this very subject, and the reason why is I had a, 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 a an awakening to the fact. I like to pride myself on being grateful, and and I am. I am a grateful guy. I'm very appreciative, and however, because of my frustration with the timing and the process of my breakthrough and su the success that I believe in my heart, that I should have, I, I, I'm destined for, I get impatient with God sometimes. And because of that impatience, I get ungrateful. Mm -hmm. And for me today, I had this realization, just I'm gonna share a little, just super short here, that technically I should still be in prison. Or I, I never actually went to prison, but I was supposed to go to prison. And I would just technically be getting out over the last year, somewhere around there. And so while the seven years has been grueling and tough and a grind, and it, you know, it's been a lifetime, but this is when I truly started my path was seven years ago. I could ju just be starting that process now. And I'm looking back over the last seven years of all the things that I've learned, what I've been able to accomplish, what I've experienced, the joy, the love, the happiness, the miracles, the blessings that come out of nowhere, and here I am sitting here being an ungrateful jerk to God, the one that gave me this opportunity to begin with. Like, what is wrong with me? So your message hits me right here because it's so timely. And I think a lot of people, I, I meet a lot of people that are going for their dreams like you are and going for something bigger. And they're all in the same place of like waiting. Like, okay, is it going to happen? But they're still pursuing and still moving forward. So that's beautiful wisdom by you, Alma. Thank you for that. Always, always here. All right. Let's see. Number seven. 
Can you share a touching story of how your music profoundly impacted a listener's life? I feel like a um, few of my songs have, if anything, probably I should start speaking about healing me, you know, and uh, there are a few songs that um, have healed big parts in me, big wounds in me. Um, of uh, never feeling maybe safe enough with other women because women have this natural tendency of talking behind backs and from young childhood i i never really felt connected with them even though i came from family with of we were five children and i had three sisters and one brother and so with three sisters it's uh, you kind of still still have a bit of a relationship but you still find out later that there is some talking behind so i think that when i came to london i don't know 12 13 years ago I felt a bit of a separation. I felt a bit more lonely than ever before because I really separated myself from it all. But then I wrote a song that's called Sister and I wrote it for my twin sister about how much she means to me and how much, how much you know, it doesn't matter what's the weather when we're together, really it doesn't because we are the ones who create our experiences and they can be always joyful or always full of memories and gratitude and just experiences this is why we came to earth to experience things right and i think happiness is never real if you don't have anyone to share it with but with my twin sister is always so pleasant to share it and with this song i think i healed in me the trauma that we don't have to and we should forget about separating ourselves we have to remember that the biggest treasure of life is to have people you can connect with easily and share those experiences and journeys and and those uh, amazing stepping stones that you are you know just we are all growing right um so i feel like every woman on earth is now my sister it's just because i really feel that song so much when i sing it every time i sing it it reminds me i probably even start crying because i remember that i want every woman to remember that we are sisters and regardless what our upbringing showed us regardless of our religions and separation, cultural separation and all that. I love, I love every woman and I am there for her, for, for her, you know, if she's able to see the love and see that there is no hidden agenda. My agenda is not hidden, it's on the, it's, I'm an open book. I just want to give you happiness that I feel at this moment. Not everyone is able to feel it, so I'm here for you. That's so beautiful. Number eight. In this interconnected world, how do you reach out to and connect to seekers who resonate with your musical message? I feel that um, I feel that social media is the place where, at the moment, I am trying to create a bit more connection and tell my story, my pieces of my story, because. Uh, I have not yet found a way to do it on my own platform, but I really understand the value of it today. I'm grateful to you. Mm. Um, I feel that it's 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 social media. It's YouTube, it's Instagram, it's Facebook, uh, and of course, I'm creating events for people to experience live music, soulful, heart-touching music. That's called soulful in London, and I'm also running. Uh, field of love women's circles where women are able to um, come and experience this knowledge learn new practices uh, find the most amazing books and uh, spiritual cartoons that teaches us about our our true uh, essence and you know what's the purpose of life and uh, how we can just relax with it and be maybe in touch with our purpose and also you know how we can just be enjoying it <laughs> so that's <laughs> I kind of got caught up in the answer. I've not <laughs> it's just I have nothing to say but beautiful. Um I'm just okay, wow. Number nine, how central is authenticity to your creative process and how do you maintain it in your composition? I think I was really blessed. I was first of all very protected from very young age uh, in from many, many perspectives. I was just like, a, I was a golden egg, you know, carried with love. And and so that gave me this sense of, ah, oh, I'm so important, I'm so special. But at the same time, I think when the time came for me to realize that, well, there's nothing special about me if I don't do anything special with who I am. 
so it's my jobs and it's my actions that represent my true essence and then i realized that with you know simple things like being kind to people and saying a nice thing you can lift and make their day and and then that that beautiful thing may carry them making somebody else's day so it's small actions that make a big difference but i think what makes me feel connected to uh my purpose and uh and who i am today is just not forgetting the importance of grounding of being there for myself as well not only i'm there for other people but i think it's very important that when we give we give from abundance but we can't give if we don't have enough here we can mm. give from lack which will feel resentful will, will cause friction will cause so it, i think it's very important to understand that um we we, we are born to be abundant and abundance it doesn't come from having a lot of money even though this is is, is is exchange in energy, our biggest abundance is energy. So how do we collect that energy and how do we maintain and protect that energy? These days I don't feel like I wanna go in any pubs and any bars, even though there's live music playing, even though there's open mic and I can share my message. I just feel like I have to be here. I'd rather be somewhere here where I can give my energy to my loved ones and rather than sharing it with people who will not respect it, appreciate it and have anything will not move that energy with love to a sacred place, if you know what I mean. A hundred percent. I'm I'm 45 and it's taken me till about two years ago, a year ago, to where it's just like I did I really want to be careful about who I'm around and who I spend yeah. my energy with. And so I a hundred percent resonate with that. For even for a long time, like even though I don't drink, I quit drinking a long time ago, I still like going to bars. Like I like I, I still liked it because I enjoyed the the stimulus if you will mm. now it it's just something i'd rather not do i would rather be with my family and you know or or be by myself because that's a much better place i think than a bar not to knock bars it's just right now that's not the place for me so i love that answer number 10 what's the most transformative lesson from your northern shamanic mentors that has helped you shape your journey I think there were two, uh, I think, simply implementable things that made a big difference in my life and could make in anyone's is, first of all, is, as I said, keep lifting people around you. You're not, you, you may not be used to it yet to say to your wife, wow, God, you're gorgeous. She'll be like, wow, you know? But this is gonna make her feel gorgeous, powerful, right, to children wow you did this by yourself it's unbelievable you know mm. like we want the best for them so system is teaching us to say oh you can do better you can do better you can do better instead of saying wow how well you did you did your best how good you did for husband for even somebody in a bus stop i love your smile you know not something like hey i love your shoes even though this may be the only compliment you can come up with at that moment you know but i love something about you it's just giving that moment of connection i notice i see you i feel you so this was my first i think awareness moment where i started being uh, sunshine i started lifting people in my life so going to school giving millions of compliments to women to fathers who are taking their children to children noticing them and how much joy it can spark in their existence and then the second one was um that they they taught me to teach myself to do everything i say they say I know you know that in the morning you're gonna make yourself a cup of coffee. Tell yourself, now I'm, I'm gonna make myself a cup of coffee. And I'm gonna follow through. So you teach your subconscious and your conscious that you are gonna follow through with what you say. So if I'm gonna say, I am gonna make a million this year, this should act as an impulse for my subconscious to attract everything that I need to be able to, to fulfill this mission. So we need to practice ourselves because you know in this busy life, we really say much more than we do. So we should be very cautious and careful and teach ourselves that every time I want to say something, I'm going to do my very best to do it. And then, you know, miracles will start happening. <laughs> That's excellent advice. I love that. Number 11, how do you balance the spiritual essence of your art with practical aspects with sharing it with the world? Well, um, I think the spiritual aspect of 
of my work and of my journey is really about getting the message heard. And yes, there should be a return. And I don't know whether the return is going to be material or is going to be energetic, because really, if you can have people, spiritual people, listen to music uh, like Destiny and feel the guidance of the through the song of of you know maybe this is this is the aim of our you know of our, of our existence is to just trust the process and just and just you know learn to have no thoughts and learn to have no fears and and i think uh, once we are there then uh, we can have anything we want as long as it's not driven by ego it's driven by a bigger you know bigger message that my the goods that's going to touch me is going to have helped a lot of people in this world, right? Um, I think that it's possible to do um, having a bit of material, uh, like a, I would say, return through NFTs and uh, potentially through live concerts and maybe even online concerts. And but truly, truly, and honestly, if I can choose uh, to touch more hearts or to uh, receive some money. I would always choose to touch the hearts of people who may have not paid anything, but energetically they feel more empowered. So God knows, God knows. Maybe we will make a lot of money from music, maybe we'll make money from somewhere else. But the, but the calling is to keep making, keep writing, keep recording, keep sharing, even though it's free. Keep sharing, keep, keep, keep the flow going. So those people who are at that moment need to hear those songs, they can access them. You're going to be very happy when you start to see the new plot the platforms that are designed for not just the underserved but artists and really i think when they were created it was with the artist in mind but at the same time it was creating accessibility and creating a culture of inclusivity with these new platforms because it's giving everyone an opportunity to monetize their gifts talents and intellectual property and so some of the things that you mentioned with the the live shows and experiences there's so many different ways to be able to do that with it through immersive storytelling, um, some of the other technologies that are coming out that a lot of people haven't even seen yet. People will be able to put on live events and concerts from their own home that feel like you're in the sphere in Las Vegas. I mean, it's just so many cool things are changing and happening. So for someone like yourself that has a giant catalog of music, but also so many other talents because you're speaking i know you've got books in you and i'm sure that people want to learn from you so there's going to be a great opportunity for people like yourself that want to share your wisdom and share your love with people like you're going to just love what's coming you're going to benefit from it amazingly all right number 12. can you describe a significant challenge in your career that helped you train that i'm sorry let me start over can you describe a significant challenge in your career and how you transformed it into an opportunity for growth? Hmm. Well, I think uh, one thing that pops into my head is, uh, I, you know, there is this event that I'm running is called Soulful. And um, it's really about once a month we're gathering and we're opening doors of amazing church for community and families with children to come and experience high touching music. and you know, for them to understand what is the power of music and how music can, you know, touch and, and feel good. And then maybe they will be inspired to practice music more or even try and write music. And the idea was to inspire, you know, community to come together. And um, there was a moment where I, I, had, I had a partner uh, with whom we created a beautiful band, it's called Phoenix and I, we produce a lot of amazing Pink Floyd type of music, uh, very political and very classic rock amazing. Um, not to be over the top um yeah but you can happens... be over the top on this show by the way absolutely you can be over the top <laughs> thank you so we had a small disagreement because he came from very far away and we had a small disagreement and he just left mm -hmm. and i realized that i'm on my own to do to set up the whole thing to uh like to, to carry massive speakers set up the sound and i cannot be doing five things at one time there's an idea that i have those skills it's just i cannot be in five places at once so i just had a moment of thinking well not good but i'm gonna have to juggle this so of course you know if you are that person you know it's called 
God gym. If you're that person who's saying, okay, life challenges are making me stronger. I understand as a challenge, I could be saying, oh, I'm so weak, I'm so sad. Why for me? No, I'm choosing to say, I can do this. So I gave a couple of calls. I found a sound engineer right away. Uh, I came, made another call, another friend came. I feel like uh, maybe this question is leading me to this um, a very important point that also came from my teachers is that everyone is going to be rewarded according to their mindset. So if you are able to see the same problem that's coming your way, life's challenge, mm. you want to see with positivity, you are going to be rewarded with solutions faster than you can imagine. But if you want to say, why me? I'm so sad. I'm so so sorry for myself. I don't want to do anything. I just want to scroll or just cover myself with pillows and stay there for five days. Um, I think it's very important to stay positive regardless of what the life is throwing at us. And to be able to do that, we have to understand that we can't change our thoughts. And with our thoughts changes our emotions. So prayer is a great practice for it. It's releasing all the things that we don't want and asking for things that we do want. And um, yeah, we deserve, we deserve to be free and happy and in control. So good. <laughs> Thank you for that. Number 13, take us through a day in your life as a mute. Take us, I can't talk today. Take us through a day in your life as a musical healer. What does it look like? Okay, so uh, what would a day with me feel like or what would a healing session feel like? What's the question? So just take us, okay, I'll, I'll rephrase the question. As a musical healer, mm -hmm. like what is your day like? For, me, for instance, with me, I I do I have a quiet time every morning to get my mind right. Like mm -hmm. I go, I have a process every day so that I function better in society, function better in life, and I do my job in excellence. But if I don't take the time to get my mind right and get connected, mm -hmm. I'm doomed. I'm a maniac. I'm I'm kind of all over the place and a maniac anyway. But if I'm not connected to God, and I, if I don't start my day that way, I'm doomed. Mm -hmm. So for you as somebody that is healing with your music, and this is your day in, day out process, even though you're a creative and you do other things, yeah. What is this like for you? Okay, so I think that's a very powerful question. Um, I wake up in the morning uh, with my children, with hugs. I think love in the morning is a very important thing. and I, I'm so blessed to be given uh, true love from my children. Uh, then I you know, prepare them, prepare breakfast for all of us, whatever it is. Are they going on a camp? Are they going on a, on a trip? Are they going to school? So I take them to school, giving some beautiful compliments to people around, lifting some people, and then I come back home and um, I have a shower. And then I have, uh, very important, I think, uh, is to understand the time we can spend and we should spend every day to be grounded, harmonized, and balanced. And I know that the best way it works for me, and I have a very strong uh, guidance and feeling that it will work for everyone else is to spend that time connecting with yourself, your higher self, and God. And for me, it works through practices that came from my teachers. There is a self self sufficiency complex that takes three minutes, and I do it three times a day. I do mas masculine and feminine balance because I have a lot of masculine energy, and I'm just learning to deal and um, drive and ride on my feminine energy. So what I do, I balance them. Also, there's it's like a yoga complex. It's like it takes three minutes, but I think understanding and the mind perception, how I feel after those practices are done, I feel like I'm in control of everything. I am so in control of everything. And if you can feel this way in the morning, then what can take you away from that? It's very mm -hmm. unlikely something can take you away from that. You just feel grounded and balanced to take whatever you know, whatever we have to do. So practices. Uh, then I do some writing, some recording. I collaborate with some producers. I ask maybe for some beats for, for you know, what's going on with the ones that we already created. Um, and um, then I pick up. I make some food. I pick up my children from school. Um, I take them to tennis. Maybe play a bit of tennis or pick a ball with them. Um, then we'll come back home, we'll eat together, we have dinner. 
maybe play a bit of music together, and then we'll go to bed. Then we'll start again the next day. <laughs> Sounds like a lovely day. It's a uh, full lovely day, yes. <laughs> Number 14. If you could collaborate with any artist, past or present, on a song of unity, what would it be and why? You know, two people popped into my head. Um, it's very interesting because, you know, the answer comes from the heart, but then minds try to jump in and, and give you reasons not to or to. So uh, <laughs> the one person that I feel uh, my energy could, I, I felt like is, is driving force for me when I feel like I'm a feminine uh, kind of feminine woman. Well, I would say I'm a woman of very similar energy to Freddie Mercury. I felt like this in my life. So I would love to write a song with him. I, I would love to write a song with Prince as well because I believe that Prince really strongly stood up for also for healing music and for free to frequency. And he had to learn to play 15 different instruments to be able to record his own music for himself. So no one questions of how he did it. And he was able to you know release those songs that through the machines that were run by devil. So it was his way of dealing with the situation that he put himself into. But um, yeah, I believe that uh, with Fred Mercury, oh God, we could do amazing Unity song. <laughs> That's a great combination. I like that a lot. Yeah. And I'm a fan. I'm, it's not even Prince's music that I love. It's the artist Prince that I love and the creative genius and his process. And you're right, how we learn to play all the instruments and, and, and also the things that he stood for. And the fight that he took on, uh, you know, it had to have made him a target. But that's a whole other conversation. But I love that you use those two. That's that's really cool. Number fifteen. What personal practices or rituals nurture your creativity and keep you connected to your artistic purpose? Wow. So this is also beautiful. I think it's very important. The part that I do in the morning is self-sufficiency. I also do Earth and Sky practice that I, I would really love to share these practices with, un, under our video so people can access them because having a way out of, you know, stuck mind is very powerful. Um, so one of the things that have, has found me recently is uh, also comes from my teachers, but there is this space, uh, there is this place in the universe that's called uh, Creator's Laboratory. And it's basically a space where uh, anything is possible and everything is possible. And it doesn't take hours and hours and days and days to create a masterpiece because there is no physical, physical parts to it. It's all in the mind and in the motion. Wow. So before I write a song and before I would record something that is very powerful, I would tune into that place and I would ask for guidance and for the message that needs to be heard on earth at this moment in space. And uh, I would ask divine power to work for me, to sing for me, to act for me. And uh, I would surrender to how it feels and I would just be guided by it. It's very good. Number 16, what's the most unexpected feedback you've received and how did it influence your musical direction? Hmm. Um, I think... I think I'm a little bit um, maybe touched. I have been touched, I think, by this one thing that happened uh, not long time ago by my twin sister. Of course, maybe it's really hard to hear a, a constructive criticism from our closest people because we're like, you should be the one supporting me. Why are you criticizing, right? So because I have written so many songs and I've recorded so many songs and obviously they want the best for me. They, like she was just saying, Maybe you should just have one song finished instead of writing 500. And I was just like, this is so hard to hear. I don't choose to just you know, work on one song for years. I, I write because it comes, comes from me. I'm just a channel. I'm not somebody who chose to do this. If I could choose to do it, I would do way better, you know? <laughs> I, I don't know. I guess so. But uh, yeah, so I mean, it just made me realize that you know, maybe in their perspective, the success is measured by fans or by the money the music can make. I think in my in my perspective, perspective, success means of how many people I can really touch and encourage to search for true answers and and uh, 
and find those answers because the person who will seek will find. You understand? Mm. I think the biggest trouble in humanity at the moment is ignorance and separation, feeling like, oh, I'm so special and uh, who are you? This is the this is the illness. This is the you know, and and we have to heal it. And but only we only can heal it through our own experience of love and suggesting to them that you know we we're waiting for you. We are here for you. We are you know we would love to have you with us. Do you know what the rest of that uh, verse is? When, about when it talks about seeking and you will find. Tell me. <laughs> so, in the Gospel of Thomas, which is a book that was taken from out of the Bible. It says, you know, seek till you find, but when you find, you're going to be disturbed. You're going to be wrecked. And then you'll be set free and you'll be able to rule over the world. And the reason I bring that up is because I totally believe in seeking. But one of the things that I've learned also in that, that the, the quest of seeking and looking for truth and whether what's true for me or what's the real truth and all and truth of the world and truth of the mysteries, truth of religion, truth of people, truth of, you know, in, in a world of disinformation. And over the last three to four years, that revelation of seeking and finding and being disturbed when I found out the truth, but then being set free has been so profound because most of the truth that I've been disturbed by is my own truth that I realized that wasn't true. Mm. And, and it's, there's a lot of personal lessons in that for myself, but I wanted to share that because a lot of people, you know, they say that verse and they say what it is and it's true, but there's another element to it that I find interesting that I've also discovered to be true. So I thought I'd share. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. I think it's very, very important to, to notice that most of resistance is not going to come from the outside. It's going to come from the inside because I don't want to be, I cannot believe it. Is it really so? You understand? So taking all of those filters that we're living in and it's a very brave thing to do. And a lot of people are rather living lies and, 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 and fake world than, you know, be, be brave enough and bold enough to face the truth because if you face the truth and it's so bad you want to make a change i mean obviously so you know here's to those amazing hearts and souls who are brave enough to make the step forward absolutely and i know i'm kind of getting sidetracked here but the 21 um the the revelation today about gratitude or my lack of gratitude that wrecked me that was humbling because i literally would tell anyone i think i did tell a friend the other day i'm the most grateful person you know and then Two days later, oh, maybe I'm not. <laughs> wow. I'm a big old baby crying about the process and not trusting God's time. Like, what is wrong with me? All right. Anyway, number, uh, oops, I lost where I was at. Uh, I think 13. Wait. No, we're flying by. Okay. Wait. Okay, here we go. Number 17. What? Yeah, this is flying by. Actually, your answers are amazing. You're, you're giving so much substance to them. It, this is because sometimes this, this gets done in like 30 minutes. If I get like a one sentence answer, which is good, I guess. But I really love how in depth you're going with your answers. I love it. So that's why another reason I say you have a book in you. I can't wait to read. All right. Number 17. I keep moving. My, my questions are jumping up and down because I talk with my hands. Okay. <laughs> If your music were to score a film, what kind of story would it tell and what emotions would it evoke? I mean, there is only one one thing, you know, I think there is going to be a film. There's going to be many films. Right? There's going to be many films and there's going to be a film about me too. And uh, I feel that uh, it's going to be one film is definitely going to be a life story. How, 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 you know, through all of that, how, how it came to where I am. But I feel like a big theme. I have a song that's called One Love Nation. Mm. And um, I really feel like a, 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 a video for that should be where, you know, I'm walking with my guitar in an empty street. It's all black and white, like Sin City, you know, like really a lot of exposure and it's just empty, like a lot of rubbish on the floor. It's just empty, plain. There is not much nature at all. It just feels like, it's nearly dead. The city is nearly dead. 
and I'm walking alone and then my partner joins and my children join and then my closest friend joins and it's just we're lifting people from the floor and then we're becoming instead of from one person we're becoming this one love nation walking together I feel like people need to remember that this is our mission and this is this is where we're heading with every step we take to remember the power when we are together and I think video clip with a very strong song like that could I hope you know touch and and give some food for thought like do i want to walk with these people towards freedom of humanity or, or or am i somebody who is just running for you know some emptiness and vanity and, and distractions <laughs> such a great answer number 18 what inner transformation do you hope listeners experience when they immerse themselves in your music I feel that the best thing they could do is to just realize that music like this is food for their souls. So if they can in this modern day spend 30 minutes or 20 minutes or 15 minutes grounding on Mother Earth and listening to spirit songs, spirit music, I think they would just be happier, be healthier, be more aware of where they are and where they want to be. I think what it would really should ignite is is their just better alignment with themselves, you know, because really rest and you know food for our soul, which is really true knowledge, is you know, is true art, is 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 is, is you know, and it's very healthy food and it's you know, mother earth and sun. And if you can do those things, you know, ten minutes a day or you know, as soon as as often as you can, you're just gonna feel a happier person. Happy person means healthier. Means means more direct, more aware, and more more on the mission. You know of your life. Very good. <laughs> Number nineteen. Can you give us a glimpse into your next creative endeavor and what inspired it? Okay. Well, I have a song now that I'm writing, and I think it's a very big part uh, of. Uh, it's a very big part of uh, also awakening people. Um, it's called Star Messenger, and it's about uh, about enlightened teacher that is giving um, direction for for my shamans, for shamans, for Northern shamans, and I guess from for to a lot of healers around the world who are truly connected with the higher with the higher powers, with the divine powers, and uh, he's. He created so many books already, and one of those books is called Star Messenger. And it just basically be, he's simply telling us about what's happening and what needs to happen inside each of us to to remember and to realize ourselves. Mm. Through this, you know, because look, if, if we if we don't do this right, it's whether somebody else is gonna get it right or we're gonna have to come back and suffer again and there is no such thing as life with no suffer we came here to go through the suffer to choose a better ways and then once we have those better ways to invite others to join those better ways um yeah star messenger look out your 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 you know your eyes and your ears is going to be a very powerful house track about about this wonderful enlightened uh teacher who's come to earth to to bring to bring us back together again that's beautiful number 20 in essence what is the heartfelt message you aim to convey to the world through your music it's just one word i just i just want people to unite you know i just want people to you know i mean in, in answer, in addition to this, to this answer, or your question, I would like to tell you a very short story about, uh, my teachers offered me a ritual. They said, only you have to have this ritual for your own healing and for your, you know, karma healing and from your, for your lineage healing. It's like uh, lineage purification. And I was like, okay. And then they were like, so what do you want for you? And I'm like, I want my, my partner happier. I want my children healthier. And they were like, no, no, no. What do you want for you? And I was like, okay i want to feel uh this infinite love for everyone unconditional love for everyone and then 
imagine after this ritual, I'm going in high gates, you know, my car, I'm driving, and I look people walking by. These people walk there every day, but I just looked at them and I just felt so much pain and separation, so much ignorance. I just couldn't hold it. I started crying. I was like, why are we living in this world that is so cold? Why, why, why are we seeing all these people walking by being so cold to each other? Mm -hmm. You understand? Owners of this of the different shops next to each other, they are they they're there for years. But do they talk? Do they can I help you with anything? Can I give you anything? You know, how can I make your day better? Like we, we need to remember that we are here to create a healthy and happier community. So if I'm my skill is to write a song and record a song, and you have a skill to write, make, make amazing production that is, you know is your skill is your talent why don't we collaborate and make that amazing tune that can inspire this whole world or if you make amazing haircut and i make amazing i don't know amazing dinner why can't we just exchange and have this healthier and more united way of living where a lot of people are he healthy and happier just because they have that connection they have that wow somebody cares about me they offered you know to come and give me a hair and they didn't ask the money they said well how about you exchange in your time whenever you have a moment or whatever you feel like you want to give something back to me? I think, is, is it a barter or is it, a, it comes from heart, so maybe harder, I don't know how to say, but what I mean is that I want people to come from their minds, come to their hearts more often than they do because in here there is so much criticism, so much ego and so much logic logic driven we need answers no we don't if it feels good your soul is saying this is for you if it feels wrong your soul is saying this is not for you understand it's that simple we have an inner guide you know and and my guide is saying we have to unite <laughs> such a good answer <laughs> thank you um the last question I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do the question I had planned. Um, we didn't go into any of your story at all, but that was on purpose. But I do want to take you back to the beginning of when your when things started to unravel, where you went down your other path before you found this path. Mm -hmm. Looking at yourself today and what you've learned and what you've overcome and how you've grown and the the new perspectives that you had. If you could go back and speak to the little girl before everything went off the rails into whatever capacity it did, because it happens to all of us, what message would you tell her today? I would just tell her that she's so awesome and everything is going to be okay, really. Because I know, I know it now, you know. I, I've done a lot of running for it and a lot of falling and a lot of carrying, but it's all worthwhile because we're going for a better future for everyone, you know? <laughs> we got this. We got this. We got each other's back, mm -hmm. which I think is very important to have somebody covered there when you're, you're watching there, you know? Mm -hmm. Yes, very much so. I had the very similar message that I would send my younger self to. Um, yeah. Wow. Okay. Unbelievable. Uh, you've survived 21 questions. Congratulations. Um, I need a pet giraffe to give to people after this. I'm going to, I'm going to work on getting stuffed giraffes to give my guest. Um, anyway, um, <laughs> there's a story there. I would love to give you the opportunity to have the last word to share whatever's on your heart, but also in that last word, Please make sure to plug your, you know, your website, your music, where people can find you, support you, mm -hmm. and basically be become even more amazed by you, um, you know, than I was yesterday as I was listening to your music, and even more amazed than I am today. So <laughs> please share. Okay. Um, so in very short, uh, I am, I am here. Uh, you can find me as Alna Music. I am. Also building a new website it's called I Am Alna. This is going to be a place where I'm going to do a lot of creative projects. I'm going to share my skills and hopefully people who want to learn about them. There's going to be workshops for them to learn to do very cool stuff, very cool jackets, you know, drawing on leather and jeans, as well as writing songs, recording songs, being on your mission and, and you know, learning branding and a lot of cool things. 
um, most important is to remember that we have to try and uh, reduce the distance between each other. So, you know, if you if you can make somebody feel good, please. My 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 biggest question, and not not the question, my biggest hope that you can make people feel good around you. And uh, yes, you know, well, probably one year ago, two years ago, all the people around me thought that I'm so happy, but inside I was so unhappy. I was at home, always mean to myself, to my children, to my partner. But we don't have to be there. We can't change and we, we we are here to find that change and if you ever need some kind of guidance if you ever need to find the true knowledge that came from my teachers and there's, there's so much of it for free online please be in touch on alna music instagram or facebook or um or yeah those two places work well um uh, I'm, I'm i'm happy to respond to any of your questions and direct you to the true knowledge that can transform your life into much better place uh, for everyone um alna music on youtube is a good place to listen to music um apart from that uh what can i say i love you and i'm here for you <laughs>